Okay, now keep talking. This is like extra, okay? Think of the answers here. These are just like tips, okay? Tips in cooking. Uh, that's why it's called Secrets of the Chefs, okay? So these are food tricks you can do in real life, okay? If you want, try these at home if you can. Now with number one, uh, sometimes salt gets sticky in a salt shaker. Ah, uh, when you buy like a salt shaker or at least salt in a bottle and then you put that bottle in the cupboard and it goes a lot, a lot of time has passed when you have to use the salt again, but you find it, uh, it gets sticky and it won't come out, right? Uh, so what can you put in a salt shaker actually to fix the problem? So think about it. What can absorb moisture in the salt shaker that makes it sticky, right? Could it be a coin, rice, or tea leaves? So imagine, think of that, nah? Number two, what can you put on fruit as you cut it so that it doesn't become brown? Ah, the picture is very perfect. Apples, right? Ah, apples, if you once you cut it, you don't want it to look brown. It's not it doesn't look delicious. So what people what do people put there? Uh, milk or sugar or lemon juice? Think about it. Three, after you have used your microwave, what can you boil in it to clean it? Ah, so that's a nice way to do it. That some microwave, like microwave in some household are really like yellowy, brownie, or like re looks really like dirty. So to help, like sometimes you can't scrub everything out. It's very hard to do that. You need lots of strength. So actually you can put, you see here, right? A bowl of water. Ah. Small bowl of water added with these things and they will help clean it. What is that? Inside, water and vinegar or milk and butter or coffee and sugar. Yeah, so imagine. Now, number four, where can you put a green banana to make it become yellow? Ooh, yeah, okay. So, how to make banana ripe faster. Yeah, this is it. Because to make it from green to yellow means to hasten the process of ripening. Eh? Where should you put that? In the fridge? Hmm. In the sun? Hmm. Or in the paper bag? This is like to make to make it like uh, the best way to do it, okay? In other, what do you call, other methods might, might make it happen too, eh? but not recommended by the chefs, okay? So, guess, guess. Number five, when you put an egg into salty water, it floats. What does it mean? Ah, so this is how you can check uh, the freshness of your eggs, okay? If you're not sure, like, uh, if it's still edible, sometimes you crack it and then the smells, it's rotten. It's almost like drawing a lottery. You, you don't know if it's still edible or not. So one way to do it is just put it in a, see, put the egg in a cup of water and see if it floats or not. But the result, you can check here. If it floats, uh, is it fresh? Is it not fresh? Or is it from a duck? Okay. The clue is not C. Uh, I can tell you that. Okay. With number six, uh, after you boil an egg, where can you put it so that you can peel it easily? Uh, so lots of people like find that to peel boiled eggs. It's very hard to make it look beautiful and perfect because, for example, Mira, whenever I try to peel the boiled eggs, uh, it's always come out like rough, like like pimple face. Imagine that, like lots of holes in there because I'm not like a perfect cook, okay? But this tip will help me, okay? Where you peel the boiled egg, uh really affects it okay so either in cold water in salty water or in the microwave mm -mm. maybe not microwave no. mm -mm. number seven what can you put in a cookie jar to make cookies stay soft and chewy yeah so this is the key here uh most thai people would like their cookies crispy okay but in america sometimes you can see they have like cookie dough uh, and some some people even eat cookie dough like without putting it in the micro in the oven to cook it. Okay, uh, but there's another variant of cookies that people like to eat. They call it soft cookies. Okay, and to make it stay soft and chewy here, right? One trick is to put it in a jar, but you add something else in there. 
What is that thing? Noodles, sticky candy, or a piece of bread? Ah. Okay, see what can give moisture. Number eight, last one. Cutting onions make people cry. What can you do to prevent this? It, happen it happens to me every time I tell you that. You can chew gum or add salt to them means to onions, okay? Or hold your breath. Ooh, that's quite hard, right? Uh, so imagine that. The answer is actually here. See? Pair work. Uh, the answer is number one. The answer is B. Uh, number two, C. Number three, A. Number four, C. Number five, B. Number six, A. Number six, C. And number eight, A. Uh, okay? Great. That's like some tips. Hopefully, you can use it in your real life. Okay? Uh, now, we're doing lesson D now. Future food. Uh, but I've already crossed it here, so we don't have to do the reading part, okay? And we also don't have to do the writing part, recipe. Ah, but the, what you call, one of the writing topics of the writing assignments could be from this let unit, okay? So with food, food will definitely be one of the, sh what you call, chosen topics, but it depends which what what you call which topic will we get on the day you will know on the day okay of the writing test but possible topics will be given one week before okay and food could be that huh we're going to actually look at uh the activity three now to do the listening part okay this is a tour for chocolate lovers, okay? So, listen to Yumiko get information about the San Francisco Gourmet Chocolate Tour. Ah, check here, the tick box here, the things that the tour includes, okay? This will be useful as an example of when you have to do your own food tour, okay? So, look at the vocabularies they use. Look at uh, how they give recommendation, ah. And uh, so it's not like tour management, that kind of thing, but the feeling, the way they described, they communicate of like the details of the tour. Okay, now let's hear it. A tour for chocolate lovers, part A. Hello, San Francisco Gourmet Chocolate Tour. Yes, hi. I'm interested in taking your tour. Can I get some information? Sure. Do you know our local newspaper, the SF Weekly? Well, we are the winner of the SF Weekly's Tastiest Walking Tour Award. That's great, but first, can you tell me, I mean, what do you do on the tour? Well, this is a tour for chocolate lovers. We walk to seven different places in the city. At each one, we try some chocolate. Seven different places? Wow! Yeah! So, please don't eat before the tour. Okay. We visit a chocolate maker who uses fresh ingredients from local farms. I see. We also go to a newsstand. There are lots of newsstands in the city, of course. But this one sells 225 different kinds of chocolate from over 15 countries. Sounds great. We have hot chocolate that is prepared by one of the city's best chocolate makers. And we try some world-famous truffles at a Swiss chocolate maker shop. Your tour sounds wonderful, and I'm definitely interested. Can I get some more information from you? Ah, so that's the first part of the audio, okay? So when you hear that, do you did you catch what the places that the woman described? That what can Yumiko get from go, participating in this tour? Uh, if you see like the clues from my cursor here, okay. But okay, let's look at it. So with this core, what what does it include? Well, it includes chocolate that's made using fresh ingredients from local farms. Well, that's for sure. You know why there's no tick here? Because yes, the San Francisco Gourmet Chocolate Tour is the winner of SF Weekly. Okay but not in the category of Best Chocolate Award, okay? It's something else. 
Mm, so sometimes in listening taste in general, like they would trick you in this way. When you hear the audio, you will see the keywords in the choices, but that choice might not be the correct one. Okay. Uh, also, it's not a chocolate factory; it's just a chocolate chops. Huh? What else newsstand did you catch that they also visit, visited a newsstand that sells see different kinds of chocolate in two hundred twenty five and huh? what else sculpture may eh? sculpture made from chocolate nope nope if there's one, I will go there and eat immediately okay so it's hard to have a sculpture made of chocolate ah huh? what about this one hot chocolate? Yes, there's a hot chocolate prepared by one of the best chocolate makers in the city. What else sweet chocolate maker am I? Famous for chocolate truffles. Yeah, truffle. This is the picture of the chocolate truffles, okay? Normally in round shape like this and with some coating. Uh, and lastly, Mexican shape, man, sort from chocolate, uh, no, no, not exactly, no Mexican shape, okay? Ah, so that's it, that's the first part, but the second part, you don't have the clues here. For this part, you have to hear, you have to pay more attention, because there are some details that you need to fill in these tables, okay? You need to hear about the cost, how much does it cost, where can you meet with the rest, Okay, to have this tour, what time could be the date, month, year, could be in the morning, in the afternoon, so pay attention. And the last one, group size, no more than how many people? Huh? Okay, let's hear it and pay attention. Part B. More information? Sure. How much does the tour cost? $48. But remember, that includes free chocolate. <laughs> And where does the tour start? We meet at Justin Herman Plaza. Do you know where that is? Justin Herman? Can you spell that? Justin, J-U-S-T-I-N, Herman, H-E-R-M-A-N, Plaza. Okay, I can find it. And when does it start? On Wednesdays, we start at 10.30. On Fridays and Saturdays, the tour is at 2 o'clock. And how many people will be on the tour? It depends, but usually about 12. Okay. I think I'd like to book the tour for this Friday. It's for two people. And three... mm, okay, so that's the end of the audio. Mm -hmm. uh, so you see, did you catch what this, what do you call, what the woman said on the other line? Uh, if not, you can just pause here my, you can pause my video and then go back to the beginning of the audio, okay? To be able to fill out this information. Huh? If you catch everything perfectly without that, then let's look at the answers together. So the cost is what? 40, 48. See? 48 dollars. Ah, meeting place? Plaza, nila plaza, atan, but eh, how do you spell Justin Herman? Well, you spell it like this. Justin Herman Plaza. Ah, and the times, so she didn't just say the, what do you call it, the, the period of time. She also said the day, the what day of the week, okay? So she said Wednesdays, in my, on Wednesdays, so every Wednesday, nah? Wednesdays, the tour starts at 10.30, in my, but on Fridays and Saturdays, the tour is at 2, in my, 2, ni 2 p.m., nah? not 2 a.m., too late, nah? Nah, no chocolate shop open during that time. Nah? And the last one, group size. Do you hear the number? 12. Nah, okay. So hopefully you catch that. If not, it's okay. Go back, hear the audio again, and then try to get this information. I want you to practice this because in actual exit examination when you're on fourth year, there will be a listening test. And uh, you need to be able to extract information. Okay, when you hear... Uh, an audio script. Now, with this one, we won't actually do it here in the video lessons, but I will go through it in the live session with you because this is a graded assignment. It's a group presentation in a way. Ah. But you don't need to show me slides, okay? You just have to talk online in the group for me live, okay? Uh, so there will be more more details, okay, in the in the instruct in the instruction part of the small talk assignment. So if you go to Google Classroom, 
uh, there will be a rubric or there already. The section that says um, presentation, okay, and the small the part that says small talk. Uh, but I will find you like the what do you call it? the slides will be there later, okay? To uh, what do you call it? to to really show you the example of what kind of food tour or which step should you what do you call organize this. Okay, but the key question will still be these things. Okay, what for food will your tour include? Muping, chabu, sushi, or it could be Thai northern food. Up to you. What places will you visit? What will your tour do there? Who will lead the tour? What will be the cost, meeting place, time, and group size? Mm -hmm. So it will be like that. Nah? So, so when you see this video and you don't have a group yet. Go and check in the Google Sheet and fill your name of that group. Also, contact the group members, okay? So they know that, oh, can I be in your group or not? Like, So we have Facebook also, okay? So find that person. Or if you want me to really, what do you call it? Set up some kind of poll, like, okay, who's in group one, group two, group three? Then you can go and see the details of the person in that group, okay? And contact them. Mm. If you want me to tell me, okay, I can set that up for you. Now, and we are going to wrap up this, okay, with unit three, all about food, okay? Uh, so at least at the end, you should know, of course, vocabulary is about food. Uh, but also, can you, do you remember how to give and accept recommendation, okay? Uh in a way, it's kind of like expressing your opinion if you agree or disagree with something, okay? Uh, also, you need to be able to use the time clauses. Now, do you understand how to use before, after, as soon as, until, once, all these things? Nah? Make sure you understand that. Uh, also, hard to make, easy to make. This is like just extra thing, but if you feel like... This will help, then you can do the homework here if you want. Uh, and in the real world, ah, this is actually, I want to say, like, not in the real world, in the writing test. Like, okay. What is your favorite food that they will ask you? This will be like one of the writing topics that I mentioned. Nah? So make sure you have enough vocabularies to explain and enough grammatical knowledge. Okay. To write, okay, my favorite food is to you have to cook it by you like ping, right? You have to steam the rice first, uh, maybe in a steamer, and then while you wait for the rice to be cooked, you need to grill no, you need to grill the pork on stick, yeah. The stick pork on a shark on a coal eh? or on a griller or, or in the oven up to you uh, and then when it's finished you dip it in a tail sort like something like that uh, so uh what do you call learn from this vocabularies and ways of describing food okay and that would definitely help you with the writing test and and with the what do you call the small talk assignment for sure food tour when you want to convince people to go to join your food group tour of course, you need to be able to say that food is yummy, not just yummy, okay? But creamy, uh, juicy or crispy or crunchy, salty, sweet, who knows, okay? So learn from this. And I'll see you next time. For now, bye.